sponsored by Good and Gather Sparkling Water. Add a touch of sparkle. Tonight, musical guest from the band Summer Sleeves, Jeremy Charbonneau. Sea Town or P Town trivia with author Lindy West. I'm Chick Parm, and here's your host, Jay Goodman. Welcome to both is the show song of the night. Now here we go. I'll play a song and host a guest. We're all here for all the rest. We've got Jay Big Heavy side two. Well, it's RG and Jenner too. Jake and Kyle, dogs that bark, making comments, sending hearts. The Joslin family, Ethan Jones, Demi celebration guns, Ron Hexagon, Johnny and Sean, future man now drink, Roshan. Somebody named Cookie Sheets. We'll find out Thursday. We've got a Corey, we've got a Keith, Kate Munn's farting, Paul's a pickle, Bruno dances, sit that dickle. Z Duffy and Useless Cobb, Christopher's a horse and bob, both my parents emoji clapped, David Calsa talk about taking naps, Munzee Moots and Cousin Paul, Kurt and Molly, that's not all, and if I didn't catch your name, we're still quite To spend it with you. Oh, what a perfect day. You just keep me hanging on. These episodes go on and on. I'm back. My excitement I can't contain. I might even eat a fried plantain. It's Tuesday night. Let's have some fun. Welcome back, everybody. I knew five years ago when I bought this piano for $100, it was going to pay off, and it only took five years. Hey, it's good to see you. So, it's been, oh, what? It's been two weeks since we've been uh, broadcasting the show here from West Seattle. We're super excited to be back. We've got a, an outstanding show planned today. Super excited. I've got my executive producer and uh, co-music producer here with me. I've got my... Uh, my artistic team in the house. We got, we got the whole thing really coming together. Um, I, I think to start off though, before we dive in, uh, we have to acknowledge our sponsor, which once again, Good and Gather, also known as Target Generic Brand Sparkling Water. Holly, you wanna join me? Yep, yep. Here we go. Good All right. Evening. So, cheers. Oh. Cheers and then, Plum. we're getting there. It's been two weeks. You're a little rusty. Hold up, Chief. I should say uh, executive producer and barber. Barber, Cheers yes. To that. But not your nail technician. You did that yourself. No, today, uh, today's nails brought to you by Jay Goodman. Uh, last time's nails brought to you by H. Goodman Jr. But today it was... Uh, Today, Jay Goodman job. So we're both really excited about tonight's guests. We have two guests that honestly were, are just like off the charts excitement level for us. Um, in a moment, we're gonna have Lindy West join us. We are like, super fans. I mean, we're not gonna get like too, we're not gonna be too embarrassing about this until maybe after she appears, uh, but we're really excited to have her. Um, and then Jeremy Charbonneau from Summer Sleeves is a, a friend of the band and a friend of ours, um, another West Seattle guy, so we're excited to, to uh, talk to him too in a little bit. But it is Boat Song of the Night, and um, so we should do a boat song. You help me do a boat song? Yep. So, as you know, it's episode 45. I, I'm honored, if nothing else, I'm just honored to bundle the ones tonight. We got to do that. Um, I, I can't believe it's been 45 episodes. So Boat put out our new record, Tread Lightly, available at boat.bandcamp.com uh, on May 1st. We were doing this show kind of as a way to get excited about the record and then the show took over a life of its own. So new record is exciting and wonderful. This song is not on it. Um, it's just fun to do these shows and do songs together. So 
<clears throat> without further ado, you ready? Yep. I always play this too fast. I'm gonna try not to play it too fast. In the apple tree behind my old house There's a little place where I would hang out Looking for a new place now that it's gone Well then I can go to whatever I Say I give you an A and me an A minus. I give you I, an A and me a pretty good. I missed a word or two in there, but what are you gonna do? Uh, it's an older song. I see I'm getting like 135% from D Crane, which I appreciate very much. Um, okay, so both song of the night, song of the night is out of the way, and now we get to come up to the most exciting parts of this evening, where we get to welcome in our guests. Um, I am going to call up our Fisher Peanuts Technical Difficulties Hotline and have our first guest join us. I'm gonna find Lindy on here. Tonight's Fisher Peanuts Technical Difficulties Hotline. Brought to you by Fisher Peanuts. Celebrating 100 years of taste innovation. You wanna get nuts? Think Fisher. I love the part where I get to scroll through and see everyone who's watching. It's so nice to see all of you. Hey, it worked. Well, hey, can you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're kind of quiet. I'm gonna turn you up on, on my end. Oh yeah, it's way down. Hey, now Hi. it's gonna work. Hi, oh my gosh, thank you so much for doing this with us. I was thinking before we started that like a big part of your job is doing interviews and meeting people that you don't know and talking, but it's usually like reputable organizations. And I'm just some putz on Instagram. So I really appreciate you coming well, in and spending a few minutes. I'm honored to be here, truly. Thank you. Truly really blessed. Well, we, uh, I know we have a friend in common, friend of the show, Corey Anton Hale. When I- um, The greatest. I, I, never heard of him. He, uh, <laughs> he, he when, I, when I, so I listened to, I don't know how you feel about audio books, but I listened to Shrill on audio and when, at the end, when you were going through the thank yous and his name came up, I had a moment of like, oh my God, we know the same person. That's amazing. You know, it was, it was very cool. And so he, uh, he put us in touch and I, I'm thankful to him and thankful to you again for being here and um, spending a couple minutes together. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, first and foremost, you guys, you, you and your family are doing okay. Everyone's healthy and, and feeling okay. Yeah. I mean, we're pretty uh, extremely lucky. We, my Family has a log cabin um, out in the middle of nowhere. So we've been out here for over two months. Wow. Um, just hiding in the woods, which is, um, it, it's really nice because it feels the same way that it always feels out here. You know, mm -hmm. it's a it's a really easy way to feel normal. Um, 
and I know that in town it doesn't feel normal. So right. I'm just kind of like, you know, we're just like pottering around and I'm like doing all the cliche Instagram stuff, baking bread, growing cabbages. Uh, I ordered all, I ordered uh, so much yarn. <laughs> I don't know how to crochet yet, but I'm going to figure it out or get it's work and just have wasted all this yarn money. So, Oh, you um, know what? I think the governor is going to come through for you and extend this thing and you're going to have plenty of time to work on the crochet. Yes, yeah. please. That would all be worth it. The global pandemic. If I learned how to make a one blanket. Right. There you go. You also were, you posted a picture. I mean, I feel like months back you had done like, maybe a self done haircut, which was groundbreaking at the time. Now everyone's doing it. Like, or maybe you just did a short haircut and bangs or something. And I remember thinking like, change it up, change it up the look. You were a transit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I did, I did get bangs and then, um, and then the pandemic happened and then you no longer have a professional to fix, right. to do your bangs. So then I posted on Instagram that I was going to let my husband cut my bangs and then my hairdresser, who is also my dear friend of many, many years, sent me the meanest text saying that I, under no circumstances was I allowed to let a hom cut my bangs. And so now they're just growing out. You just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Well, maybe you crochet some kind of like headband thing or something. Yeah. Or yeah, like a sock, like a condom for this. Yeah. That would be cute as hell. I, I think that's a, that's a whole new trend coming is the, the bangs out of the face crochet condom is a whole yes! <laughs> yeah, my so Holly, who was just here with me, helped me with the. I, I was going for like um, 1989 BMX dude, kind of, and she used to cut my hair all the time. It hasn't in a while, but I think she nailed it. I'm really excited about that to look. Thank you. Incredible. Um, so I, I, I just, you know, I didn't have like a whole plan of things to talk about. You, you've done so many interviews, like I said, and they're all. I mean, the thing about 2020 is all those interviews are available online, and I didn't feel like we should just talk about all the things that you always talk about, like your, the, the causes that you work on. I mean, I want to give you a chance to mention, especially like Operation Save Abortion, but like I, you've told your stories a lot. What I'm, I'm yeah. really excited to find out about, I know you, you finished a book and I did. you, you I finished did. a book. You, you have like a season of season three of Shrill is, is happening. We started the writer's room today. Today was the first day. So that's my question. Like, how do you, I mean, it, maybe because you're in a place that you said it feels normal, but it seems it's it's a tough time to be creative. You're an incredibly creative person, but how how are you balancing that with with everything that's going on? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it was hard to you know the book that I finished during quarantine, um, and like I, I I wrote quite a bit of it during the quarantine because um, I'm a procrastinator, so I had a lot left to do. Um, and it's a it's a goofy book like it's not like a it's not like a serious political book um full of you know brilliant insights about the government or whatever it's like a joke book full of poop and uh, poops and farts yeah. and um it was hard <laughs> cuz you know it's like you wake up and you get a news alert on your phone that's like the president says, you know, all poor people must eat poison. And then you have to like go write jokes about, um, you know, Keanu Reeves or whatever. It's a it's a book of movie reviews, like goofy movie reviews. Uh, so it was the, at the like getting into it was hard. Sorry, this is a really long winded. Way no, it's great. I say almost nothing. But um, the getting into it was hard once the pandemic started. And then and then it became kind of a relief. Like it was actually really nice to go to that place every day and like just be goofy and silly. And, um, you know, the book, the idea of the book is like you're watching movies with your, you're having a movie night with your best friends and goofing off and making fun of the movies. And that's not a thing that we get to do anymore. And to get to sort of do that virtually and feel like the, these stupid things I was writing were going to go out into people's houses and maybe they were going to laugh even though I can't go over to people's houses and laugh. I don't know. There was something nice about it and, and it became a nice escape. And the writer's room we just started today, virtual writer's room, which is very weird. Yeah. Uh, but 
that is, um, it's even better because I get to actually interact with people. <laughs> you know, mostly out here, I've been interacting with, you know, um, lizards and squirrels. Right. And um, that's nice. Did you know that there's a kind of a native squirrel called a Douglas squirrel? And it is a small black squirrel that is so cute. So only because my in-laws, like I'm a city kid, but then I, my in-laws are, are like woods folk. And so the, that's the only reason I know is because well, like, I, I just, was adopted into this rural family that knows those types of things. I just found out about it. Uh, I, I, someone said it looks like a cabin. It is a cabin. Um, I just found out about the Douglas squirrel like two days ago. Yeah. And it's, well, I, cause we noticed them in the yard and then I was saying, I was marveling to a friend, there's this incredible tiny squirrel. They are really rare because apparently the big shitty gray squirrels that we have in town are not native and they push out the cute little baby Douglas squirrels. Tail as old as time, right? Ugh. Fucked. Yes. They probably came from Europe. Yes, bastard squirrels. Yeah. Oh man. I so I mean that's we've been we there's like a a, a goldfinch family out in our yard. Like, I just feel like we've had more time. Like it's things have slowed down enough. And like I'm still working and we're still doing homeschool stuff with kids. But I mean pace is nowhere near where it was before. So like getting to see a squirrel or getting to see a bird, which used to be like a fleeting thing, and then it's gone. Oh. Now it's like oh we can focus on this for a minute and learn about it. When one of the squirrels comes onto the porch, it's like at, we shut everything down. It's like, um, I mean, it's we're, we become paparazzi for the squirrel. It's so, it's like you really do get attuned to very, very small things. Um, I mean, I saw a baby lizard on a rock today, and it was like Brad Pitt, baby Brad Pitt was on the rock. Yeah, I would say maybe even more special. It was, it was your lizard yeah absolutely and my best friend yes right for it for as long as you need it to be so i mean to a degree you feel i mean it sounds like you're feeling like i mean this is all a challenge but it's also there's a nice thing about it right like you're getting I mean, to feel a different like experience a different part of what your life has been and you know what, what's around you you know i i hesitate to say anything remotely positive about the global pandemic uh, I don't mean that, like, it's great. And I'm, like, so lucky to still have be able to have my job uh, until Hollywood implodes. We'll see. Um, but uh, if you take, if you put it in a vacuum and you take away the horrific global pandemic, oh, my God. I mean, this is the best thing that's happened. Like, I, it's been very clarifying for me yeah. um, that I need to travel less. Like the the the, I'm so much healthier just getting to stay in one place. Like mentally healthier and physically healthier. You know, getting to have an actual routine, cook my own food every day, go for a walk, not be constantly on a plane eating airport food and running and like being alone in a hotel and like. Uh, like I don't want to do that anymore I just yeah. want to be a country woman whose biggest problem is slugs right you know? well and also I mean I, I know from reading your work and listening to you speak and, and I, I agree like this our system is a mess it and that's being exposed to people uh, it's not a surprise I'm sure to either of us we knew the system was a mess and we're seeing it and like just the the severity of it right now but yeah. with that I'm frustrated, but I'm not shocked. And I think some people are shocked and they're focused on that. And I'm, I, I, I look forward to when we can focus on solutions and that space that some people maybe are filling with shock, I'm able to fill with appreciating what I have and recognizing the privilege that I'm accessing. But with that in mind, knowing that, you know, we're safe, I'm still working, we can get food, you know, like it, there's, yeah. it's, it's just a multifaceted thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, for sure, it's really complicated. And there were a lot of ways that uh, my my old life, as part of the old system, was toxic. And it's there's a small blessing in having been able to break out of that and and kind of recalibrate my priorities. Right. You know, I'm not going back to like six month long book tour. I, I just can't. 
especially because yeah. we're all learning like this is still really fun and people will tune in and watch it so i'm like i'm sorry why was i constantly flying to i don't want to pick a place and be mean just but a yeah. random I mean, ass fucking place right I yeah know. i mean we started this show at i don't know i mean the the, the genesis of it was there was a lot of little pieces, but really it's just been a, like you said, like being in that writer's room and having people around. We've been doing this for two months now. I think today's the two month anniversary episode 45. And it's just, it's just hanging out. Like I, I, you may have had experiences yeah. when you, I know you were doing like um, hosting open mic type stuff at one point, like stand up things. And it like, yeah. I know when I've been to things like that too, there are nights when the the crowd shows up and there are nights when it's the regulars and you wish there was the crowd, but the regulars is like, it feels like home. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what this has been. Like we have people who watch and that's awesome. I love that there's an audience watching this thing. And if there wasn't, it's still the 15 of us or so who show up every night and we joke in the chat. And it's just, a, it's a social event when we can't have a social event. It's really nice it exists. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, and it's like, I think everyone's being really sort of, well, not everyone, but I think that that a lot of people are are being really self-critical about what they are doing and what they need to do to get through this time. And I think um, you just need to do, you just got to get through it. It's like a totally incomprehensible, unprecedented, unprecedented thing that's going to go on for way longer. Uh, and, you know, like, I think that every coping mechanism is valid. That's probably a scary blanket statement to make. Not everyone. Not most right. Of not yeah. A vast majority of things that people are being hard on themselves about, they don't have to be hard on themselves about. No, I you probably like, shouldn't hurt anybody else. But take it easy on yourself, also, at this no. time. Yeah. Lindy yeah. West endorses murder. No. Right. Um, so the 63 people watching this right now are really like freaked out and uh, they're just going to tweet everybody. No, I'm kidding. So when we were, we were texting back and forth kind of a little bit to get ready for this and you, you're such a good sport and you agreed to like play a silly game, which is one of the things that we do on here. So I was thinking about what kind of silly game we could do. And so you're from Seattle, right? Or you spent most of your formative years in Seattle. I'm from Seattle. From Seattle. Okay. And I knew there was, so what, the California thing was late. My parents are right? from Seattle and we all went to Garfield. From Seattle. Oh, let me ask, okay, quick thing. You had a lot, I don't, I, I'm, I draw a blank down which book it was in, but you had like a, like a quick, you, you kind of grazed over being a bass clarinet player in middle <laughs> school. Oh yeah. So oh, as yeah. a bass clarinet, as a middle school bass clarinet player, I just need to, like, it was, you, you threw it out there and never came back to it. And it, well, it's not, it's not the only thing that's that stuck an with me. On my life. Sorry, yeah. what? <laughs> it's not the, uh, much of your work has stuck with me, including that little bit. Like, it was, it was, I, it was so, I've never met another middle school bass clarinet. I'm sure there are still those out there doing that, but it was so amazing to hear that. Yes, I went to Washington Middle School, um, Mr. Nat, um, and I, Played the bass clarinet. I think I chose it because I was like, that is, I, I, you know, you want to be like different or something. Like, I was like, that's cool. It's a clarinet saxophone. Yeah. Um, and no one else played it and it rocked. And, um, I, although all the parts are so boring. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I played it, I threw freshman year of high school. Um, and then I stopped, but it was fun. My husband plays the bass clarinet now, and he, really, um, yeah, amazing. Well, he's, he's mainly a trumpet player, but he also plays clarinet and bass clarinet. And sometimes he'll be like, try to toss me the bass clarinet and be like, toot a solo. And I'm like, it's, I'll fly right back to you, buddy. It's been a minute. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to play the, the alto saxophone and my, for some reason, my band teacher looked me up and down and said, no, you're a bass clarinet guy. <laughs> and then I just, I loved it. It was awesome. We moved, my family moved partway through seventh grade and I went from having a band teacher I loved to a band teacher who didn't, you know, I, I stopped playing after we moved. But for those couple of years, it was fun. It was super fun. Anyway, that was it's a total intense. instrument. I feel like I poo-pooed it, but actually I have totally fond memories of playing bass clarinet. 
and it's it's a I it's a gorgeous sound and I love yeah. it. Yeah, maybe okay. This might be the time to pick it back up. We got time, right? Absolutely, we have time. Yeah, we have time. Okay, so so this tangent came from you're from Seattle, but yes. you you have a show that's based on your book, which is based on your life, and that's in Portland. So the game I came up with was it's called C Town or P Town. Oh God. And it's trivia. Okay. This, these, these noteworthy things happen in Seattle or in Portland. So your answers are C Town or P Town. Okay. There okay. are, I tried to go 15 questions. I couldn't find a 15th interesting fact. So we're going 14 questions. Okay. Uh, let, we have our, our announcer down in Burbank, California, who does our promos for us. He did a great one for this game. Uh, let's see, here we go. Buckle up and get those Burgerville bibs ready. It's time to slay Z Town or P Town trivia. Brought to you by Jeff Extra Crunchy. I said, get out my damn way. That's Jeff Extra Crunchy. All right, so our, um, our art director, also our daughter, our 11 year old daughter, did this picture of you here for the, uh, for the game. Um, Jif and extra crunchy all the time crunchy like I sometimes I like crunchy sometimes I like you're, you're you're crunchy all the time no no oh, okay but right now that's the one that's what I like on an apple yeah okay I like I like crunchy on toast I like smooth and I'm having like a banana with peanut butter it's I'm you know, picky I have love for not all peanut butters I have love for all textures all textures of heavily processed peanut butter. <laughs> I don't right. like hippie peanut butter. I don't care if that has more integrity. I don't want just a peanut ground up and put in my mouth with I want I want chemicals. Yeah. Um salts and preservatives and sugars. We were if going I, with go ahead. If I can live with myself, I would buy the Reese's brand. <laughs> Like I, I never have, but I assume it's incredible. But uh, we, we were doing. I just, it's just there's something about it that's perfect to me. We were doing that PCC stuff forever, and then we ended up getting one with sugar, and we're like, oh my god, this exists. This is so good. Yeah. Never going back. Yeah. 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 You gotta oh. live. You gotta you, live. Ooh, so, yeah. Put that palm oil in there. Ooh. Where, where, where do you fall on pulp? In like, uh, like juice pulp. I have to have pulp. No, 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 no pulp. Or maybe light pulp. Yeah. Okay. I'll t hey, I'll there's no wrong pulp. answer. I think no, no pulp is unnatural. Is we you might as well have orange soda. Right, but, like Sunny D. Yeah. Right, but heavy pulp is repulsive. I'll go with you on that. I, yeah, I, somewhere right in there, you gotta find that Goldilocks spot. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. Without further ado, the big debut of C Town or P Town. Are you ready? I'm ready. I think, I mean, you know, it depends. If you paid attention in fourth grade Washington State history class, you're going to do great on this. I certainly did not. Okay. All right. So this city is home to the world's smallest park. The world's smallest park? The world. Park? Uh, it's just under two feet in diameter. It's called Mills End Park. It was supposed to be a, light, a lamppost. The lamppost was never installed. They turned it into a park. P-Town. P-Town is right. That's one point. Yes, P-Town. I just feel like, like I would've heard of that. It's a, it's a Portlandy thing, right? A two foot diameter park. You guys okay. can't answer the questions for me. I know, How they I... really. They, okay, they, I'm not they... gonna look at this. I'm just gonna look at you. I'm not. They've got your back. They, they, they're rooting for you. Okay, question two. This city burnt down to the ground in 1889. Seatown. Town. Sea Town. All right. This city has more dogs than children. P Town. I'm sorry. It's Sea Town. Sea Town oh! has more dogs than children. There was actually a group in the last year that started a petition to replace playgrounds with dog parks because there's more dogs than kids. So who needs places for kids to play? Well, Way to go, Sea Town. <laughs> 
kids. Kids kids are more important than dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I mean, Sorry. we love our dog, but. I, I know. I'm pro-dog. I just, sometimes we got to calm down. We got to calm down a little bit. Okay, how about this one? This city was the first major American city to have a female mayor. I'll give you a little more info. So her name is, was Bertha K. Landis. She was the mayor in 1926. Seatown. Seatown. And then we didn't have another female mayor until Jenny Durkin. Go Seattle. Way to have a, a streak there of just the dudes. But we're back on track. I love right. that for us. Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we've got room to grow. Okay, this city had its name decided on a coin toss. And if the other side of the coin would have landed, it would have been called New Boston. P-Town? P-Town, yes. I found out, I didn't know this part, but when Seattle was founded, the, the founders originally, uh, the Alki Point was the first place that was, you know. Yeah claimed or whatever and they wanted to call it new new york but ended up going with seattle instead so it's probably a good choice um I like this city new was, new new york's pretty good this city had the country's first general strike of sixty thousand shipyard workers in 1919. sea town sea town it is you got it okay question seven this city, determined by college degrees and library card holders, is the most literate city in the United States. I feel like that's still Seatown. Yeah, you got it, Seatown. I mean, I feel like I'm a little bit biased here. I, a lot of good facts about Seattle. We're just more Seattle. interesting. What's that? We're just more interesting. We're just we're very interesting. Sorry. How about this? This is one of only two cities in the world to have a dormant volcano within the city limits. City limits. Yeah, it's called Mount Tabor. Well, that's P Town. Yeah, it's P Town. You got it. Too I didn't much know of a clue. It was a dormant volcano. Yeah, I, I don't know what the other city was. I kind of got a little bit. I spaced out on the research, but it's one of two in the whole world. It's kind of cool. Okay, how about this? This city had the country's first gas station in 1907. I mean, the, I. The country's first gas station? Yeah, it's, 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 I'm, I, I mean, it's, it, I, this was one step above Wikipedia, so I can't say for sure that this is a thing, but it was on multiple websites. I believe it. I'm going to say C-Town. It was C-Town. Amazing. You're eight for nine so far. I oh okay. I'm in trouble about C-Town. We're learning so much. The last part of this, oh, Tabor. People are saying it's Tabor. I'm pronouncing it wrong. What did you say? Sorry. I think I said, ta I think maybe soft A, Tabor, uh, T-A-B-O-R. You, you did great. Thank you. I'm okay. I'm going to rewatch this later. If I have a little cry, it's okay. Um, so the lightning round to wrap us up here. Five questions. This, it's, these famous people are from either C-Town or P-Town. Okay. L lightning round. Here we go. Okay. Beverly Cleary. P-Town. P-Town. Duff McKagan of Guns N' Roses. C-Town. C-Town. Carrie Brownstein. P-Town. That's C-Town. C-Town. Right, I mean, Portland and everything, you would have thought, but C-Town. Mel, her. what's that? I know her. Oh, well, I won't tell her. That's fine. I don't, I don't <laughs> um, Mel Blank, the voice of the Looney Tunes. P-Town? P-Town. And finally, Courtney Love. C-Town? P-Town. P-Town! Ah, so it. close. Hey, you got, that's 11 out of 14. I taught elementary school math. I can't do that in my head, but that's a really good percentage right there. You did great, 11 out of 14. That's nice. You I, don't have to sugarcoat it. Big clap. You get a big clap. Thank you. Thank you for that playing was fun. a game. It was good. That was, I, you know. that was a good game. Yes, thank you. It was fun to get to look that stuff up. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, I feel like I learned a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, before we wrap up, I want to give you an opportunity. Like I, I mentioned Operation Save Abortion before. If there's anything else that you feel like like you want to alert our viewing audience to, um, I, I want to give you an opportunity because I, you know, I figure, like I said, it, our, our, our viewership is, is loyal, if not enormous. But still, I know that 
people want to know kind of what you care about and, and what we should look into? Uh, <laughs> uh, we got to, <laughs> it's fine. It's not COVID. Um, I don't think there's like zero cases in Jefferson County right now. I think all that cotton wood is dumping on everybody. I'm sure it's allergies or something. Thank it's... you for saying that. Yeah. Um, uh, what am you mean? Like, what am I watching? Yeah. What do you watch? Like, yeah, give us, yes, exactly. Like, well, if there are causes that you're supporting or even things that you're right now, like, excited about, you want to, well, like, open okay, our we eyes. Gotta, we got to save abortion. You can yeah. go to my uh, Instagram page and there's a link in my bio to save, save abortion, um, please. Uh, I, because I was finishing the book, I didn't get to watch any cool TV for the whole time. Um, so I just finished Tiger King yesterday. And um, what, do you, get, what do you think? I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thumbs down to the the people inside of it. Thumbs up to the entertainment factor. I mean, tremendously exploitative. The false equivalency of Carol is just as bad as the tiger men who all run teenage tiger sex cults but carol what uh has a website like i was like and you're the, the the i would say that's my main complaint is that for the for narrative purposes the the show is constantly trying to make you be like yeah carol is also really bad i mean the like murder thing like I, whatever anyway it doesn't matter i yeah. there it was absolutely um captivating we didn't uh, watch it but i've seen enough memes that i think i've seen it's like i've seen the whole thing like everyone's meme page is, so, is all about that for a month i can t i gotta say to you that i thought that and then there's so much more in it that you can't it's like a lot happens uh, and i'm not even recommending that you watch it necessarily but it's really fucked and every moment there's a new thing where you're like, wow. Um, but it's hard to watch. There's a lot of tigers um, in a small box, which is yeah. like really sad. Um, yeah, the memes do not prepare you. It's true. So I watched Tiger King. I mean, mostly I watch Dateline. Um, I'm obsessed with Dateline. It's the, it's perfect television. Um, but it's not, it also has, does not, I wouldn't say it has integrity. Um, I don't know. You should. Uh... Oh, you know what I watched? You know what I watched for this book was a bunch of 90s thrillers. And I got to say that if you want to have a great night, you should watch The Fugitive, The Rock. Oh, yeah. And Speed, because they hold up. Also, you know what holds the hell up is Rush Hour. But you do have to look past. Chris Tucker constantly makes fun of Jackie Chan for not speaking English. But that aside, and there's right. like no women in it at all, except for a kidnapped child. And then there's like a woman cop that they just sexually harass. But man, Rush Hour is so fucking funny. Still funny. It's still funny, except for the thing I said. But. Um, <laughs> Sexism, racism. Also, but, Brett but is a rapist, I guess. Alleged. I don't know what the... Does the law care what I say on here? Go nuts. So, there's some ethical concerns, but I, I feel I can wholeheartedly recommend the fug a triple feature of The Fugitive. I would do... Here's how I would do it. I would start with speed, amp it up a level to The Rock, and then finish it out with just... I mean, there's nothing... It's just... The Fugitive is a perfect film. It's perfect. Amazing. It's, it, um, we'll, we'll do a Netflix party. We'll do a, a marathon Netflix party with all these, everyone watching. It sounds like a great weekend yeah. event. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you should. Thank you, Lindy, thank you so much. I mean, I, I, I was so excited about this. Like I said, when I finished your books, like I had this, this thought go through my head of like, well, I live in Seattle. If I see her and she's with her family, I won't bug her. But if I see her and she's alone, I'm going to super fanboy out. Like, and now I, I don't have to do any of that. Like, it's, I got to meet you. I'm so excited. Your, well, your yeah, work is so great. 
you can just come up and talk to me like, because now we know each other. Whether yeah, exactly. I'm, my family's there or not, who cares? Old friends. We'll talk about bass clarinet again. Anytime. Okay. Anytime. Awesome. Thank we you. We can have a clarinet choir. I'm I'm in. I'll, okay. I'll, I'm going to start looking on on the uh, Facebook gear group for a uh, bass clarinet right now. Do it. Awesome. Do it. Do it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. We love you. You're amazing. Stay safe. Have a great time with your family. And we can't wait to see the, the stuff you're working on. And um, see you around Seatown. Awesome. I love it. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thanks so much, Lindy. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, mind blown. That was so much fun. Thanks for, thanks for playing, Lindy. Thanks for watching, everybody. It is late oh my goodness i am a talker so i'm gonna just jump right in right now to our second guest i'm gonna call up the fisher peanuts hotline again i'm gonna find jeremy i'm not 100 percent sure if he is watching from the summer sleeves account or from his account but you know what jeremy i'm gonna find you tonight's fisher peanuts technical difficulties hotline brought to you by fisher peanuts celebrating 100 years of taste innovation you want to get nuts? Think Fisher. Oh, it's coming, folks. Scrolling, scrolling. There we go. Yes. Amazing. Jeremy, the, he, here you are, and here you are. <laughs> here here. Double J. It's so good. Uh, so good to see you. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. I think our beards, like, um, I feel like I'm looking in a mirror right now. Yeah, we're definitely, look at how we have kind of the same, like, um, what do we want, maturity patterns here? Is that is that an okay thing to call that? That's hot. Okay, thanks, man. Oh, I, and is that is that Dylan hanging out with you? That's Dylan. Hey, Dylan. Good to she, see you. Giving me that. Oh, dad. Yeah. I. So uh, this is the third time I've hosted this. I was a guest before that, and <clears throat> Hazel... Our daughters know each other. My daughter, who you know, like, it's a whole lot of, oh, dad. But it's okay. It's fun. Whatever. They'll look back on this one day and still be embarrassed. It won't change anything. That's, that's what we live for. So, dad. Yeah. Dad. <laughs> uh, so, you, so, so, Jeremy, you, like, we, we got to know each other just, like, at a barbecue in town a handful of summers ago. But then you made a connection that we played together, I, I think, Nectar Lounge, like, 05, 06, with which band was was, what, that, was it Smile Brigade? It would have been Smile Brigade on my part when I, yeah, I was playing with, with Boat. I mean, I think like there was okay. a Boat oh, connection right. that goes back now like fifteen years. It's pretty awesome. Yes, and I apologize. Like if this last couple of weeks, my mind has just turned to mush. If you bring up something two days ago, you're gonna remember it. Hey, f full disclosure, I had to text D. Crane to ask him the uh, Nectar Lounge details because I couldn't remember either. But he's like <laughs> a steel trap up there. I love it. It's good stuff. Um, and so, so summer, I got to see Summer Sleeves a couple of times before the shutdown. Um, yeah. And I know you guys, like, you were playing out a little bit, but you're still, like, you're posting songs that you're doing on Instagram, like original stuff and covers that I, the, the Nick Drake cover from like a couple weeks ago now was so amazing. Like, it's really cool to get to see you still making music. Yep. It's awesome. Yeah. What's that? Oh. Yeah, it's, just, it's just great that you're still, like, you're not letting this slow you down. No, I am, you know, if with the commute time during my day, I have like a couple hours on my hands. What am I going to do with that? I don't just play guitar. And so yeah. I've been doing a lot of that, just playing, and also finishing up recording and um, just trying to stay busy. And then you know a uh, friend of the show, Ethan Jones, right? Tell us how you know Ethan. You know, we actually go back slightly farther than 15 years ago. He and Kevin Emerson um, were regular customers of mine um, when I was working at Ladro in Fremont. And they would come in all the time. And, um, you know, we'd just hang out and chat a lot. And... Um, played shows with him and he actually, we kind of, in the last year or two, we kind of reconnected and he even just recently did an amazing job of mixing some music that I, that I have been recording. So um, it's been awesome to kind of reconnect with him and, and such an awesome dude. 
Yeah, for you sure. Know? He's been he's been a um, a contributing part of the show for. I mean, you've seen too a couple of yep. times. He's, yep. he's a good dude. Well, so I totally cut, like blew our timing tonight a little bit. You, I want you to play, play a song. I'm gonna. Would you mind doing a song? Like, uh, we'll talk a little bit more when it's done. But I, I feel like if I start talking, I don't know how to stop talking. So I want to cut myself off and let you just play something for us. All right, let's do it. Cool. Um, this is going to be an original one. Um, I'll just jump in. Oh. So tell us about that song. Is that, I saw one of the comments, I think it was Ethan that said the new album is great. So is that a new song off of a new record? Yes. Um, yeah, this song, yeah, that's one of the, probably the newest song that did get recorded on that one. Yeah. And is, and where can we, I mean, I know I, I listened to you on your Instagram page, but where can we find, like, where can, where can we send people to find your music? Um, you know, Check out Instagram on Facebook. That album's not out yet. Um, Going to be hopefully mastering it before too long. And, uh, then next step from there. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. And then, so is that coming out as a Summer Sleeves record or is like as a solo? That's what's the Summer Sleeves. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, we well, go ahead. Yeah, man. Oh, I just didn't hear. Okay, sorry. So, we, I mean, we, uh, so I know Holly and I saw you guys play at the Sunset and at the, um, I'm drawing a blank on the place in the High Dive. Thank you. She's off. I, I should have just said line. She would have filled it in for me. So at the High Dive, like it was, it was so awesome to see you. And I, I just can't wait until we're allowed to see you play live music again and maybe play a show together. I mean, it just, it's, it, I feel like this show is to some degree, it's satisfying our need to see that, but it's also just making me want it more and more and more. Yep. Absolutely. We actually even had a show that was all but, you know, written in pen and ready to go. And then lockdown started happening. And, you know, what do you do? You just, what do you do? It's kind of, there's uh, these shows like this, and especially Boat and you guys um, really filling in a void, I think. Thank you. Thanks for being a part of it. I mean, you were a part of it as a commenter many times. I'm just glad I got to have you on. Oh, I, I didn't even ask you who your sponsor is tonight. 
Oh. Nutella. Oh, good call. We've been eating a lot of Nutella in this last couple of weeks. It's a big hit around here too. We made at one point we made Nutella brownies, which have like three ingredients, like the easiest thing in the world, and uh, mind blowing. If I could, I don't know how to do an emoji at the same time that I'm talking, but like that, the mind blowing emoji is perfectly fitting for the Nutella brownies. Yep, yep, yep. It's oh. usually here on toast, or a tortilla, or you know, a spoon. As, yeah, index finger. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like how we have kind of a theme going. Both guests tonight had like some kind of buttered nut situation happening. It's good. Uh, let's let's pretend I did that on purpose. Um, yeah. That was solid. I mean, you sent me several emails about it and I was, you know, I was hoping I could roll it in. I was just lucky I had Nutella on me. Every time you, you gave me a non-nut butter recommendation, like, nope, next, nope, <laughs> next, next, down the list, down the list. I'm just glad we finally landed on something we both agreed upon. Great. Solid. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so everyone out there, make sure you check out Jeremy's stuff. I wish I had more time for you, dude. I feel really bad. Like, I, nice. I used to watch those, like, old Letterman and uh, Conan episodes where, like, they had to rush in a guest. I'm like, oh, what a dick. And now that's me. But you know what? We can always do this again. I think we're going to be, uh, we're going to be in a, a virtual music situation for a little while. So hopefully we'll get another opportunity to, to hear your music. That was awesome. Cool. Okay, so th thanks for thanks for for joining us and hey we'll see you in the comments on another episode you will awesome thanks cool. jeremy thank you so good to see you say hi to the family and uh, we'll see you soon you too peace okay. bye bye Whew. pacing is the uh, is the next goal for my next hosting gig um but that was awesome jeremy thank you so much that song was incredible i um i don't think other than on instagram i, I never got to see Jeremy live do solo stuff, but now I want to see both. I want to see his band and I want to see him do more solo stuff. Whew. Okay, so I got a little bit of a uh, little bit of time left, slouching for a long time there with two interviews in a row. I'm going to try to unfold myself. We're going to find a pet and we're going to end our show in the classic animal dance party way. So once more down to Burbank for our friendship farm. Tennessee whiskey. Whiskey done the right way. Crafted with pride. That's Dickle Tennessee whiskey. The finest whiskey you